Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back along to another episode of The Young Farmer. My name is Andy. As always, I do hope you're doing very well. You joined me this morning in what is a very interrupted schedule. Uh, we are having to do some, a bit of an emergency haulage run for the BGA. This tractor on the back is not mine. It's the wrong shade of green and it's about 30 years too old to be in my fleet at the moment. It's a beauty, don't get me wrong, it looks absolutely incredible, I'm sure you'll agree. We're going to have a look at it in a bit more detail in just a moment or two. Um, but yeah, we had to just stop in here to uh, to post an invoice, but we're done. And then we need to jump back on into the tractor because we need to get this over to the BJ, to the, uh, to the location where we're actually selling our straw. And the main reason being, as we pull away, there's no cars coming. Um, without this tractor behind me, I may be bankrupt pretty quickly, to be honest. Uh, this tractor, it belongs now to the BGA. They recently had a huge big case Maxim that was powering the very powerful uh, pelletizer, which is where a majority of my straw and hay actually goes to. Uh, and then that, the engine blew up on that one, and then they were down for quite a while. They've been down for about oh, 10 days so far. There's a bit of my straw backlogged in there, which they haven't been able to pay me for yet. And they had no, they had to put a hold on getting any more. So uh, that really was going to leave me in a very pretty precarious position because that over the winter months, that's where a lot of my income comes from, uh, as we all know. So uh, I, just, I rang up the, the, the site boss and, uh, and the, the manager of the, uh, of the you know, foreman of the of the plant and ask them if there's any way I can help out if they want me to lease a vehicle for them or if they want me to buy one and bring it in for them uh, and they said no they're trying to find one but they just couldn't get it so I've been on the road now for about five hours today and we went to pick this up for them directly because they wanted some cheap uh, muscle really some cheap power that they knew would be able to pull and run the palletizer uh, and also get them going a bit and was in relatively good condition and to be fair to them they found an absolute gem. They really, really have. And I'm looking forward to getting this uh, set up. I'm actually going to be spending most of my day down there today because there is a backlog. They are understaffed at the moment as well. So one of the uh, the main guy who would run the plant has jumped onto a truck to take some deliveries today. I'm going to unload um, this, get it all hooked up to the... I think it's a Crow Primos they have. I'm going to get it hooked up to that. We're going to get it set away. We're going to run through some of the backlog, which is predominantly my straw anyway, which means that I can get paid. And then we're also going to go and take away a, a load of um, the wrapped up finished product, which is the pellets. We're going to take that away as well. Just skip through that. Uh, speed camera without getting trapped. And then we're going to get on with it, really. So it's uh, this was really all hands to the deck. Uh, there's a load of straw that we loaded up in the last episode, I think, which is still on the trailer at my yard, actually, because there's just no sense in bringing it down at the moment. We just can't get on with it. It just cannot, uh, it cannot function. We cannot get it into the, the, the straw, uh, shed where the pelletizer is at the moment. There's too many bales in there right now, so we're going to have a little bit of a busy day, a bit of a different day. I only loaded, uh, well, I didn't even, the one that, the, the guy who they bought this tractor off drove it onto the trailer it sounds incredible it runs very well it sounds very tight it looks very impressive as well they've restored it up to the nth degree and it looks incredible there i must say uh but yeah they couldn't get anyone to haul it in time so they, i just just said i volunteered to go and do it today just to get it done because like i say without this i don't get any uh, invoices paid without invoices paid money doesn't go in the bank and that means that i can't pay invoices either so it's not a position that i want to be in at all and it was an easy solution, really, in my mind. So we're just lowering down the hydraulic jacks there. Perfect. They've pushed on. We'll just knock this off for now. But yeah, we're just going to have a look inside here. We're going through the door there. We need to open up the shutter doors. Uh, and you see, this hasn't been running for days. Not at all. Uh, usually it's fully busy, fully staffed. And as you can see here, they pulled off the other um, the other tractor there, which, which went away. So... I think that's just been towed away to the wreckers yard to be honest that's in, in no fit state for anything and all we need to do is well i say all we need to do we need to i think that's my, there's my kramer over there so i hope i can get that out these, all these bells is kind of been rough stacked in here but there's a few around the back there as well yep yeah, okay we need to move that bucket we need to then um bring in the john deere through there hook it onto here and fold everything and then get it ready to roll as well which is going to be a little bit of work oh and there's also some pallets on there that need to be shifted uh first things first though where is my there we go
All right, get some air into here, get things ready to fire up as well. That should be good. Uh, okay, so onto the John Deere. This is, oh, I reckon it's about 30 years old. It must be more than that, Nelly. It's a 49.55 that comes in around about 200 and... I think it's 250, 240 horsepower. Could be wrong. Someone let me know down below if you have a better idea. This, of course, is the European specification. I don't know what this was originally used for. I didn't get a chance to do any digging when I picked it up there. Uh, but it was, yeah, it's been fully restored. As you can see, it's looking absolutely immaculate. We try and jump up into it here. There we go. Listen to that rattle there. He's got it fired up there. It sounds beautiful as well. They've even restored the interior as well. So it does look absolutely incredible. Um, and all it's going to do really is just sit on probably about 1500 revs or so. Just flying over with that with that Primos there. But before it can do that, we do need to get it off here. So let's just see if we can do that. I can't see my ramps at all, which is less than ideal. I guess we'll find out if it goes wrong very shortly. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Yeah, all we're going to do is stick it into back here and we're going to get the hydraulics connected. Now, this one is a little bit different than your standard. This one does have a, a, a return uh, a valve on there, so it does allow for continuous flow of hydraulic oil uh, should we need it. Uh, and it does have an additional spool valve because the Primos here does have quite a lot to do. So it was adapted a little bit in the uh, dealership they bought it from. Uh, but they just couldn't get it over here. Very different things going on at the moment, which is why I uh, offered to get that done. We'll get that hooked up there. Take the shaft on. Perfect. So as you can see, we got everything on there. What we do need to do, though, the, the Primus is a bit of a bully there. It's a big old thing. Uh, we need to move this out of the way. We need to put down the the walking bed, which will pulls in the bales, and then it'll uh, it, it sh kind of pelletizes them. Uh, it sticks them into there, and then this is where all the money is made, really. So, uh, we'll leave that there for now. Let it tick over for a bit, get it warmed up. And then we'll have to sneak our way through here with this guy. So, I hope you're all doing very well anyway. Whatever you're getting up to, do let me know down below, as always. I hope everything is going well. You're staying safe and healthy. Uh, we're just going to creep around the corner here. Easy does it. Just stick it about there. The thing I need to do is just take that. Say, uh, this is this this whole system is able to take either pellets or pre-made pellets from in the field somewhere. If, if someone happens to have one of these floating around, uh, or you can uh, you can use this in the factory here. So both ways work very well indeed. Uh, we'll just get this over here. Alright, so as you can see, there's plenty. Oh, there goes the planes from the local airport field. There's plenty of straw for us to get cracking with in here. Uh, we're certainly going to run out with that. We've got uh, another ooh, couple hundred ton that we can bring in at ease as soon as we have that ready. But I think the main strategy for right now, for me at least, is just to get this lot cleared. This is all mine, as I mentioned there. So uh, I am waiting on quite a bit of money from all this to be honest there and i've got bills to pay i can't afford to not have this going so yes it's nice of me to be able to help out but to be honest it is mainly um a, a selfish move just to be able to get some to, to pay the guys so uh, what i do need to do though first is fold that down it's gonna be on that third one So this is the walk-in bed that allows me to stick over There we go, stick over multiple different bales at any given time Let's see how that's all looking I've only ever seen this working, I had a bit of a rundown as to how to do it over the phone But obviously it wasn't set up so we couldn't really use it Looks like it's okay uh, I'm going to try and do, I've been told it's reliably expect to have enough power So we'll find out really Oh ho! There it goes, everybody. Oh, listen to it. Look here. Alright, so it is a bit loud. We're going to jump straight on in here and we're going to get this uh, 
we can get this working. You defenders have to go into this job, I guess. Uh, okay. It's kind of nice to see my uh, what the fruits of my labour really. Uh, with the with the straw there, we'll see how this all comes in. We're just gonna let this one hang through, and then we'll uh, we'll get this one picked off as well. There, we should be good. Uh, we're gonna let these kind of go through. You can see the serrated uh, blades that are firing along over there. That chops up each bale of straw, uh, and then it gets kind of really compressed and compacted into pellets, and from there it goes into the hopper, up and into uh, pallets here, which we will need to move those two as well as soon as we can get these. These bales of straw away will be good. But it gets quite busy. A lot to, lot to take care of here. A lot to handle. A lot of different things to keep it spinning. Make sure that the tractor runs well. Make sure that it doesn't run out of uh, diesel. Or I think the other one actually cooked the engine there. Uh, make sure that doesn't happen either, of course. That will be good. But it doesn't do any driving. So mechanically, all you need to make sure is that engine working. It just becomes a power plant at this stage. That's all it really is now. Whoa. Too early on that there. Okay, so whilst that one is in, we've got a little bit of time before we're going to see any pallets coming through, so we'll get the next couple of bales of straw ready to roll. Okay, this is a handy little loader for this job. It's very compact there, it's got a four wheel steer, so it's nice and versatile. It's still got a little, little bit of power in there as well. Let's do this thing. We're just going to pick up the pallet fork there. And we'll get those shifted. So yeah, I have had to delay being out with the sprayer today there. We have got Chris out in the self-propelled. Uh, and then Mr. Anthony is out and about with his... Uh, back in the, in the forest actually where I left the skid see He's still tidying up all of that really. Seeing what he can do. Okay, and off come the pallets there. Now these are straw pallets. These can be used for heating purposes. Uh, you can also use them for feed purposes. Uh, but yeah, like I say, we use these ones uh, primarily for heating there. And we do uh, also do the same thing for haylage for horses as well. Uh, I'm here out the way for now. And I think I need to have a look at that bill. It doesn't seem to be quite processing through. All right, so with all this going on, then it, we're a, able to kind of get ourselves back uh, with some money coming through. Uh, big relief of my uh, of my mind, really. I know that they're going to have this all up and running uh, independently without my assistance, really. I'm just kind of helping them out for today. But uh, it does mean that we can start to get some more... Uh, oh, it's a bit soon. Uh, and there we go. There we go. That one's going a bit slow. I had to give it a bit of a nudge. Uh, it does mean that, yeah, I can kind of schedule in more loads keep peace of mind that they're going to keep going, being received and accepted and that's also processed because they don't like i say they don't pay me until they start to make the uh the pellets off the other side there which is something i have to keep in mind but other than that we're looking good as you can see this is where the magic happens there this is where our pellets are formed our little bags these are then shipped out uh we're gonna get those loaded onto our trailer actually so we'll just get this trailer folded up again and this is what we're going to be taking away with ourselves that one is all uh, we've pulled the tractor back around there and one of the bales actually gone through I had to take a phone call so it took a little bit longer than I anticipated but let's just get ourselves back in here let's take that off that looks like it's going in there fantastically well and we're going to have to move a few more pallets shortly so we'll get the next bales lined up ready to go we're already clearing a little bit of space here so we're looking good what we might do is just kind of keep cracking along here for a little bit and uh yeah we'll we'll be you know back making money uh we're gonna go for a little bit of a ride in a moment or two here and get these uh bales all sold, sell, sold up as well easy for me to say uh so what we'll do we'll just continue cracking along we're gonna get a few bales done i said i'm just gonna go until i get this uh like a trailer load done really so i think i'm about there now um given what we have stacked up as well so i'm just gonna get this trailer load all loaded up ready to roll and we'll come back to you uh when we know a little bit more and we'll go and uh, get this load's only going locally, I think, so it shouldn't take us too long. So we're going to go for a ride and we'll get this all taken care of. 
All right, then, folks, we're just waiting for this last of the bale that was on the bell there to get shredded and then to end up in the hoppy. You should see it end very soon, actually. And then we're going to crank this down. Uh, so far, so good, actually. It's been ticking along there very nicely. It's a 2200 RPM, uh, not 1500, so that is working hard. Uh, and it is, it is done there, so we'll just let it slow itself down. And, uh, yeah, so far, so good. No oil leaks on the floor, no, uh, no loud pops or bangs or anything like that. Uh, and yeah, so I think we can self safely say that it's it's kind of done its job there, uh, which is good. And everything else is just kind of taking its time, just finishing off there. But it looks like even the belt is all done through and dusted as well, which is great news. And there it goes, just knocking off the rest of the way there, and we're looking good. So uh, we're just going to leave everything as it is. And we're just going to turn it off for now. And that is us good for going. Uh, we are looking pretty good now. Got eight pallets loaded up there already. We're going to shut down the big door. There's my switch. It is there. And then, yeah, we're going to leave all that for now. Uh, and then the, the folks will be able to come back in tomorrow morning. Uh, I've cleared away a little bit of space. So there's uh, only, what's that going to be? Uh, 13 bales left. So I'll let them go start in the morning. Then we can bring some more down for them as well. Uh, and we'll be able to get ourselves going there. So ultimately very pleased to, to get this guy in. I'm sure the, the plant will be as well. That door shut. And time for me to get out of here. We've got the eight bales or eight pallet loads on the back of pallets. This is going just to the local store actually, so not too far away at all. Uh, where we'll be able to get this all unloaded before we head back up to the yard. And I think we might actually come back here. I'll give the uh, the manager a ring here just to see what he wants me to do. Because I'm, I've kind of written off my day to get this done anyway, so we'll see how it goes there. But let's get some lights on here first. Perfect. Uh, and off we go. Uh, so yeah, a bit of a disaster of it today, really, um, allowing us to get get paid. Really, hopefully it'll also curry favour with the uh, with the, the office as well, with the uh, management team here, just so I can kind of be looked on favourably for having um, having everything paid up for first. So we'll have to wait and see on that front. For now though, we're just gonna take this one down through the coastline again. Look at the color of the trees. It is turning quickly here now and it's looking beautiful and down at the bay. Uh, it really is. It's almost like a different environment completely to over at Charwell, but uh, on the estate there. But yeah, it's still looking good. Uh, we've got a little bit more tidying up work to do over on the estate as well, which I might be doing later on this week here, but we'll have to wait and see. Also might look into doing a little bit of winter plowing just to see if we can bury some of the trash that seems to be creeping up on the surface but watch this space for that one uh, and then, yeah all uh, we'll see how we get on there over the course of the uh, the next few days it needs to dry up a little bit more before we get the plow out there's plenty of spraying left to do speed trap let's slow you down there thank you very much uh, but we'll have to wait and see really hopefully that we'll, the weather will stay handy good to get Chris out there at least today and I'm going to jump onto the action hopefully tomorrow now and get going uh, Got a little bit of work to do against uh, some of the black grasses coming through. Uh, there's been a bit of land work done recently with the, the sun and the, the relatively warm temperatures and the, the, uh, a lot of moisture in the soil. Black grass is coming through like crazy. So that's going to be the next thing to tackle. So we'll see how we get on with that one. Uh, for now, though, we're going to leave it here. So thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed. I have been Andy the Young Farmer. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to Simulation for the Nation. You very kindly agrees to host everything. And we will see you all in the next one. But for now, we're off to sell some pellets and we'll catch you all later.